Hi guys, my foundation, I realized, and some lighting, it looked like it was a smidgen too dark, so, you know what I did? I took translucent powder and I brushed it all over my face to make sure that I was going to remain Casper Pale, because I'm not trying to be like cool or skin tone, you know? So, yeah. And I'm gonna do some spicy ramen. I only have one container this time. So, I'm just gonna look in the mirror here to make sure that it's registering. Okay. It looks about right. This is the powder I use. It's really hard to tell the lighting in my house that I ever have, like, true foundation color, right? Pale. Pale, pale, pale. I took some pictures and I looked in the video cam on my phone for Snapchat and I was like, oh shit. It's making me look tan. I'm not trying to be tan. I'm trying to remain Casper Pan, I guess. So, I fixed that. And I put on the Moonstone. Moonstone. I like that Jeffrey recommended, but I already had it before he even recommended it, so I was like, oh, cool beans. I don't have to do anything. I don't know how long my parents are going to be home, because this place is further away, I don't know how many hours. My dog, they're chilling. My cat is back in my room, chilling. I, she looked like she wanted to be out, so I did try to let her out, but she just stood there. She's like, I'm not going out there. I just wanted to look outside. Maybe she just wanted to see the snow. Or maybe the UPS truck kind of spooked her on me. So now we have to fill this up to the, the line in there. Same routine as always. Sit. 
now I just gotta wait for the ramen to do its thing, then I can put in the chicken and the soup booster. My mom actually was like, you know, like, I bet if you got like Tabasco sauce or something, you can get the regular things of ramen and just put the sauce in it. That way we don't always have to buy spicy ramen. I said, hmm. you know, I actually did think about that. I saw a big thing of Tapatio at the dollar store and I thought, maybe if I got like a hot sauce, I could just put it in the noodles and it wouldn't matter. So, I might give that a try. She did give me like, like the hot and spicy, but it was just regular version, but it came in that kind of big package. And then she got me other things of ramen. So. If we do have hot sauce. I'll give it a try. That could be like a second challenge. Like, hot and spicy ramen, but hot sauce version. I've been trying not to drink all this tea. It's only a half gallon. I drink little bits and portions a day. I don't even think anyone else is really even drinking this besides me. I'm trying to give them a chance, but not if they're just gonna let us sit there and be like, Emily, I know you want me in raspberry tea, you favorite. Finders keepers. I'm really glad I put translucent powder on, it made a lot of a difference. Whew. Now I have to let it sit in there anyway because it has to go down. At least a little bit. See? Translucent powder is on and made my face look pretty light. Natural light. When it let me type Casper. Now I know whenever I have to wear those foundations, at least the clean one, I have to have powder on top. Otherwise, I'm not going to look like on my real skin tone. It's so one thing if I wanted to look I was tan look like I was tan. I'm not trying to look like I'm tan. So. As I said on Snapchat, it's pale people problems. It could be worse. <laughs> Since I'm sipping tea, I'll give you some tea. There's this chick. I don't know her all that well. So there's this chick that people on Facebook were going around saying that she died. And it's not like a trolling thing, at least I don't believe it is. Everyone was real distraught by it. I did hang out there a couple of times years ago, but like, I'm not all that close. And out of respect, I put R.I.P. on our wall because a bunch of people were doing it. And then I wake up this morning. And I see people are like, no, 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 like, she's in the hospital, but you guys can't just, like, say she's dead. I don't know why, I don't know what happened, but I think it's pretty fucked up that someone just went and was like, oh, she's dead, she's dead. And then all of these people are all upset about it, and you have people think she's dead, and she's not even dead. Like, now when she goes on Facebook, she's gonna see R.I.P., R.I.P., R.I.P. all on her wall. Rest easy and stuff like that, and it's like not like it would matter if I knew, but I kind of do wish I knew who it was because that's kind of fucked up. That it's like, oh hey, she died. Like, okay, it'd be different if they mistook her for being dead, but if they intentionally like 
just wanted to be like, oh, she's dead, and not even, like, think about it. So what the fuck? Like, you need, like, proof for these things. So now all these people are probably, like, all upset. And now they're just like, oh, she's alive, it's okay now, like, she's alive. Like, I don't even know, like I said, I don't know what happened. I just know she's a Facebook friend, we hung out a couple of times years ago. My friend Bree's been pretty close to her. And those two gave me a contact high once. <laughs> yeah. That was way before I ever tried weed, but they gave me a contact high one day. So, unless news changes, she was noted as alive. And I'm glad that people were able to, like, be like, hey, she's like, she's alive, she's, don't write her off as dead, like, now her family has to deal with this, now she has to deal with this. But I mean, people did meet, so you can't really be mad at the people that were saying R.I.P. Because, like, I can only hope this didn't happen to me or one of my friends, people would care enough to be like, R.I.P. So, I'm not I wouldn't be upset at the people who did say it, just unless it comes from the source, you have to be careful what you believe, including myself, because I even thought that she was dead. But it shouldn't have to be a thing to believe or not, really, because it's like if someone says someone's dead, they shouldn't lie about it. You shouldn't have to question it, because that's a really serious topic. So I don't know, I'm, I feel all kinds of different ways on it. I need to get my ramen. But my cat is in all hook. Mad or upset with me only because she's been back on my bed all by herself. I told her when I was done eating I would join her. I just don't feel like being in my room. Like on a day that it's like somewhat bright out and like I don't wanna put myself in my little cave all day long. Like that's why I've been about my house. I never do anything with these. Like we legit just have them in our meat drawer with no purpose. No, so I'm just like maybe Dad will eat them or use them for something. I was like, okay, if you think. I need my tea because I think that's just like a disaster. Thing. I feel like this satchet is different than the other ones. I'm pretty sure because I don't remember looking this bougie. Oh, 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 there is something I did want to talk about, and if you're a Teen Wolf fan, you might be intrigued, if you're not even into Teen Wolf, then you're not even going to know what I'm talking about, so, it's up to you if you want to listen to this, but, um, alright, I can't say that I'm conspiracy theorists, because they, like, come up with their own theories, and it's usually people that are really smart, and people think they're crazy, because... They're thinking like off the wall shit. But anyway, I've been into the show Teen Wolf ever since it came out. I've been like a diehard fan for that show. I don't think I've really ever missed an episode, and when I did, I watched it on demand or like online. So, anyway, really big fan. I don't think I'll ever change. <laughs> Even when I'm 80, I'm like, oh, you remember Teen Wolf? It was such a good show. <laughs> so, 
I've been watching this show forever. And the Mandela Effect has been going on for years, but I feel like only now it's been like a main, like, big trend that people talk about it. And obviously, and honestly, without the trend, I probably never would have even known about the Mandela Effect. Not unless I stumbled upon it by accident, but yeah. I'm kind of grateful that it's become a thing, like a well-known mainstream kind of thing. It's getting there. So, this season, Styles is gone, and no one remembers him. So bear with me when I'm explaining my little, my theory, kind of, my thoughts on it. So, Styles is gone, no one really remembers him, like, at all, and they're like, what the hell is this story? <laughs> it's like they don't even know what the fuck Styles is. Like they don't know he's a person. They're like, what's a Styles? What the hell is Styles? So I'm probably gonna give some spoilers, just so you know. But like Lydia ends up being the one that like tends to remember him more. And this is like a major spoiler if you haven't seen the last episode that just aired, the previous one. Theo comes in, and he remembers Styles. And everyone else is, like, starting to, but they barely, like, they heard his voice over the radio. So they know he's for sure a thing, a person. But Theo remembers him, like, perfectly because he was fucking, like, banished and dead or whatever. And he comes back and he perfectly remembers Styles because those two, like, didn't even get along at all. They're, like, enemies. So he remembers them. And... He was saying ghost riders, like, they don't stay in, like, the same place unless they're stuck. Like, he knew about the ghost riders. So, here's when my, like, little theory thing comes into play. It's like, so, it makes people go away and disappear. It makes every trace of them, like, disappear. There's barely any evidence, and when you do find it, it's really hard to find. It's rare. So, Mandela Effect, it's like... Nelson Mandela, they said he died in, like, the 80s in prison. But then they're like, oh, no, he just died, like, a, within a year or a couple years ago. What? What? You can't bring someone back, kill him, and then be like, oh, hey, they're alive still. And now he's dead. Like, that's pretty much what they're doing in fucking Teen Wolf. Like, no one remembers Styles, And then they're going to bring him back. And then what? Like, who else? Like, everyone is fucking disappearing. No one fucking remembers them. And in Mandela Effect, it's like, a whole bunch of people remember someone, and then there might be a certain group of people that do remember. So, that's my, like, comparison. It's like, I don't even think Teen Wolf meant to do this. Maybe they did. But it's like, it's almost like it's about the Mandela effect, but in their own version of it, if you know what I mean. Because it's like the ghost riders are coming by and taking people and making them disappear. And the Mandela effect is like, everything changes. And in Team Wolf, it's like everything changes. And now, like, Styles' mom is there when she was dead before. And that was like Nelson Mandela of dead, and now he's back. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if anyone else has ever even thought of this, but I just thought, I thought about it the other night, and I was like, whoa. Like, that is kind of like the Mandela effect, in a way. So, I just thought I would share my thoughts on that. That out, looking like a crazy person, I would appreciate it if you don't see me as an insane person. That would be nice. So, soup booster. The main event here. Yeah, when I thought of that, I thought, I don't know if I'm crazy. I don't know if I'm like clever or smart. <laughs> or if it, maybe if it just sounds really stupid. But I thought it was like a neat comparison. Like, holy shit. It could be like the Mandela effect, but in like Teen Wolf World. You know, I never really, like, 
took apart this statue more to get more of the seat booster out, but that's what I'm doing now to try to get it out as much as I can. That out as much as I possibly could. Here's your proof. Like, I try to scrape out like every bit that I possibly can. With that kind of packaging, it's hard to do because the product itself is like slippery. It's like you have to pinch the bag just to even get any bit of it out. It's a little bit of a challenge. Yeah, I got the best of both worlds. <laughs> if you're like Hannah Montana. I try not to have my laptop on my freaking table anymore. Because I don't know if it was my laptop doing it. I think it might be. But unless Dad did something, my computer, I guess, was leaving scratches on the table. My mom was asking what all I do. I'm like, well, I have cups here. I have bowls here, plates here. Average stuff for a table, you know. <laughs> and my phone. So, like, did I say phone already? But, yeah, my laptop. And I was like... The one thing that might actually be making the table scratchy. So, I've been putting it on this like little as a tin, a tin of candy, and it balances just right. You can see me right here, so it's not as close as it was before because it was on the table. So just so you know, that's where you're positioned. <laughs> the thing I like about this ramen. Is that it stays hot literally for ages. Like, I could babble on to you for like an hour, it'll probably still be steam in here. I don't have to worry about it cooling down on me too much. <laughs> 